What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Channel. Got a fun one for you today. We are going to be talking about mule fishing plastics and really some ultralight fishing tips. Today's going to be another combo video. We're going to have some awesome on the water footage for you. We went out yesterday, Jeff and I did, and we absolutely slapped them. We knocked them dead, which is kind of crazy. I'll explain why in a second. But before we get to that, I want to say thank you so much for stopping by this channel. Thank you so much for smashing the like button, ringing the notification bell, and subscribing if you haven't already. If you are a subscriber, or if you're not, either way, come check us out Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern at the Burley Fishing Podcast. We live stream it every week, and it's a ton of fun. We have awesome people from all over the fishing industry, awesome guests. We have our Ned Rigner community. We love you guys, and it's starting to grow, so please come and join us for that. We also, as I mentioned, when we have our awesome guests from the fishing industry, one of the people that we've had on before is Ethan, the online outdoorsman, that's at on online outdoorsman. You can find him on YouTube, you can find him on Instagram, you know, pretty much anywhere else on social media. He also owns a company called Mule Fishing Supply Co. Mule Fishing Supply Co. One of the coolest people in the business. And, um, you know, I, I, before we get started, I just want to say we don't we don't work exclusively with bait companies. It just doesn't make sense for us. We are all about finding those smaller companies uh, that make great stuff, that are innovating. We always love trying new things on the water. It's very rare, actually, that we get to go out and fish and just fish what we want at all times. Like, it's just, it doesn't happen. Well, it doesn't happen often enough, but I never get to fish enough. And I can probably tell you that even if I was fishing 24 seven, but legitimately, I mean, the reason, one of the big reasons that we do what we do here. And one of the ways that we interact with you all very well is we'll go out, we'll look for some companies that are doing some really cool things. We'll, we'll search out maybe the lesser known companies that, you know, you can't go into Bass Pro shops and just say, Oh, I'll get a hundred of those. Thanks. Um, we'll try their product. We always buy their stuff. Um, you know, we're not asking for handouts. For us, it's all about supporting people who are doing cool things in the fishing industry, showing you the latest and greatest and trying some stuff out and maybe saying, mm, didn't like that, you know, or maybe I loved it. And then, you know, letting you let us place that order, give something a shot, give you our candid opinion on it for what it's worth. Uh, and then deciding for yourself if it's something that you think is really cool. Now, along the way, we do stumble into some things that we're like, I love this. This is like my favorite. One of those things has been mule fishing. Um, you know, we bought some of their products or we bought some mule fishing product, you know, after having, after having Ethan on and instantly it was like a whole new world was opened up for both Jeff and myself in terms of ultralight fishing, even just like light fishing slash ultralight fishing. And it has become mule fishing, all the plastics, like even the jigs, everything has become just something that is always in the boat. Um, we, we hadn't had a, you know, an official working relationship with them in any capacity. And we've been recommending them since last year. And I, I do, we do it all the time. If you've ever seen our videos, whenever we're having a rough day, I'm reaching for a donkey tail junior, which you'll see here in a second. And they've been featured on video. So if you're a, if you're a subscriber, you've probably seen them before. All that being said, we, we are working with them officially. We do have an affiliate link uh, with Mule Fishing, so I'll leave it down below. But if you're gonna make a purchase, use our link, let them know that Burley Fishing sent you. It helps us, it helps them, and we can grow together, which is what we're trying to do here. Um, another awesome thing about Mule Fishing before we get started is they do truly care about our waterways. Um, they sponsored a, a cleanup video, a river cleanup video that we did a while back. You should go check it out, it was super fun and funny. We're definitely gonna do some more stuff like that, but very um, conscious of the fact that we have to protect our natural resources and that's something that we care a lot about at Burley Fishing as well and we are all about and we're all about supporting so when you're supporting a company like this you're not only getting super hard working uh, super high value uh, and very very effective plastics you're also helping protect some waterways which you think is a really cool thing so let me set the stage for the clips that you're about to see Jeff and I went out yesterday uh, it was a Saturday um, Pre-front, there was a, a slight cold front rolling in late in the afternoon, about four or five o'clock. Knew that was had it happening. We got out around, it was 27 degrees in the morning. Cold, not warm. Typically, I like to be out before sunup. That was not happening. Um, you know, we did a couple of other things, did a little bit of work. And then we started fishing around nine o'clock, 9.30, somewhere in there, maybe even closer to 10. Um, that was a godsend. It was probably, it was gusting 20 mile, 10, probably 10 mile per hour winds to start uh, and just a couple of gusts here and there. And it was probably 35 degrees when we started. Still pretty chilly, maybe somewhere in 40s, but it felt pretty cold. That's where the day started. I, to be honest, we did not expect to have a huge day. Did not expect to have one of those days where you'll look back and be like, oh yeah, we really knocked them dead that day. 
I did not expect to have that kind of a day. Um, wanted to do some kind of, you know, light, ultra light, maybe microplastics, you know, type of day and say like, hey, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. That's how we approach a lot of these videos. We'll say, hey, let's see what's going on that day. And then we'll maybe make a video based on, you know, what's working fishing wise uh, in the morning. So went out, we did that. And uh, the first thing that happened, we, get, we, we unload the boats, you know, we're joking around, we're having a good time. And then uh, I immediately go right and Jeff immediately goes left. And, and this is a lake, lake that's very close to Jeff's house. And he was like, he'd been on it before and he was, you know, sort of telling me some stuff. And apparently it was going in one ear and out the other. So I just immediately decided I'm doing my own thing. Jeff, you go to your own thing. And I think he was trying to call me like, hey, there's, there's fish over here. And I was just like, hmm, let's fish this side of the lake. Recording? We are. So, hey, let's head this way first. I don't know where Paul's going. I told him to come this way. Regardless, we went about 10, 15 minutes. You know, uh, I like to use my electronics to kind of see what's going on down below. I'm looking to mark some fish. I'm not trying to catch any of those fish, but I'm trying to see where I'm seeing marks. So I was kind of, I expected to see fish. There was a big open area that I wanted to go check out that I, you know, saw on the, on the graph. And I was like, okay, well, that's a big, you know, maybe sort of wind protected area, big open flat. Maybe it's a little less sandy and weedy. And maybe that's like a good bedding area. And they'll kind of be, you know, stayed like stacked up maybe close by, close by that area. They, I mean, bass. And I'm, you know, so that was my thought. So I kind of go over that area. I'm like, man, I'm not really seeing much. Saw a couple marks, not too much. Then I started to fish shallow. I saw a spot and I was like, you know what? Screw it. They shouldn't be shallow, but I'll go ahead and give it a shot. That's fish. Oh, I was looking for one. Here we go. Bass. Little bass. <laughs> I just love this ultralight fishing. It's too much fun. And I'll even boat flip them for you. Shoo! Oh, the giant! <laughs> First fish on the mule minnow. Oh, and that jig stuck him just right. You love to see it. Just a little guy, but no one's mad. My dude, have yourself a wonderful day. <laughs> a little more shallow than I would have thought. Just like a foot away from this dock in this cool rocky area which is a big surprise let me get this one more cast on the other side i think that can't be a fish is it it is that's fish oh yeah another bass two bass looks like the same one his little brother so it looks like they're super shallow come here you gotta get over the pot. oh no well that was really dumb i just caught two no bass 332 on the minnow. This there's a really cool rocky area right here. Yeah. Yeah, like it's it came out of nowhere. I can't I want to try over here super bad. That's fish. That's fish. He's running too. Oh, he's gone. How did I Oh man, he must have just been holding it. That was right up on the bank. Wow. I mean up like right up on the bank. I wonder what that was. That was cool. We started catching fish left and right. Um, they started out kind of small, but they were way up under a, some docks and some rocky areas. And then that's when we kind of, we, over the course of just sort of figuring out that they were up shallow by some sticks and started kind of putting together a pattern of where those fish were. It was, it was cover. So they wanted some sticks. They wanted some, some lay down. They wanted some, you know, a dock. They wanted something, rock, whatever. They wanted some kind of cover, which is not abnormal. Like, oh my God, no way. Um, but that's, you know, we saw that, but it had to be um, in an area where they could quickly get deep. So it would always be near a steep drop off. Got one. Got one. Yep. That dude, that, oh man. Just boom, just like that. Got him. Purple. <laughs> Purple works. Yeah, they do have red lipstick, man. Dude, and they're hitting it. They're hitting it perfect. That was within a few casts. So, I mean, could be uh, the early spring color. Got him. Crappie. Decent, decent crappie. 
<laughs> Yo. I can tell by the way he hit it. <laughs> it's like, dude, freaking crop slap, baby. <laughs> so I can confirm purple makes a difference today. It's run a few different colors of this so far today. White, chartreuse, uh, on a drop shot on a Ned. So this has been, Paul found the juice early on. That's a nice fish, dude. No one is upset, says Paul. Oh, bye, buddy. <laughs> 332 is really nice for the ultralight. You got a whippy rod. It's just a lot easier to cast more accurately. If I'm waiting, the uh, got him. Oh, that could be decent. Another bass. Decent little bass. Oh, get in here. You're on light line. <laughs> There we go. The bigger bass. Woo! There we go. This this lake is known for the dinks, though. I will. Well, I can already. I'm forewarning you. All right. So that was the minnow. I was gonna go with the donkey tail, which is like a little paddle tail. But I'm thinking I'm gonna downsize my hook a little bit to a 132. That's perfect. And then we'll put. Something a little different now. We'll give them a little something different to look at, especially if we know there's crappie and stuff here. That's that's making me that's making me want to change tactics a little bit. If you're fishing with if you're fishing with mule plastics, this is the horsefly in 1.3 inches. If you're fishing with mule, you just gotta know that you're gonna get multi-species. Alright, let's just get one right up here. Burn it a little bit. Just to see what happens. Got him. <laughs> Biggest fish. Biggest fish. Biggest fish. Oh, not a bad fish at all. Yo, Jeff. <laughs> what? Look at that, and right, dude, that right in the roof of the mouth. Okay, for that, for that fit, for this lake though. Yeah. No, that's good for this lake. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> I saw him hit it too. <laughs> so uh, this is really surprising. This is not what I would have expected, but this is why you try everything because you never know where they're gonna be. It's a decent fish, I'm not mad. <laughs> now, one of our goals was to test out a new bait that was just released by Mule Fishing. So real quick, before I show you some more fish catches, I kinda wanna show you, just to give you a high level of what Mule Fishing is all about. Now, if you saw our podcast, um, when we had Ethan on, he, he talks about mule fishing and he's like, you know what? The reason it's called mule fishing is like, I just wanted that Midwest hard working quality bait that's a credible value. I, I'm not gonna tell you the retail on this. I'm gonna tell you though, you'll be um, really surprised and delighted when you do see the retail. These are incredibly high value. Um, it, it, mule fishing is not here to take a shirt and I love that. So right off the bat, the plastic that I use the most for bass fishing has got to be what is what I consider to be their stock standard, which is the donkey tail. It's a 2.8 inch uh, paddle tail. I'll crack one open here for you. They got a bunch of different colors. This is my personal favorite. This is Dakota Sunrise. It's phenomenal. Um, here's another one, a little salt and pepper. This one is called Karma. So that's like a white with black pepper. And again, I'll break this out in a second for you so you can really see some detail. Um, they do have a true chartreuse which is, this is just an outstanding color. One that honestly, there's always like a white and chartreuse, a, char a chartreuse and like black pepper. There's a bunch of different ones, but there's not a lot of just straight chartreuse out there. And then you get, uh, this is the donkey tail. This is the green pepper black. This is an amazing color. There's an all black. There's, you know, there's, there are other colors. That's a good smattering of them though. Um, but let me show you one of my favorites and I'll kind of show you what makes this bait unique. So this is the donkey tail, the OG, a really slim, almost like a tube profile with his ribbed body back here, slims down to a nothing tail, and then you get this big little, I mean, it's relatively big. This is a small bait, it's less than three inches, little paddle tail. 
Now, this is where things get interesting. You guys all know Z-Man, um, you know, it, it, notorious for being a really durable bait. And again, the goal, one of the goals of meal fishing is to be that Midwest hard working, you know, down to, the, down to the roots value, bait that's gonna work for you. You will not kill these baits. I'm telling you right now, look at that stretch. These do not have any salt in them. And I think that's what actually, again, in my opinion, I think these are actually, they get waterlogged. It takes forever for them to get waterlogged. And they really don't versus Z-Man, um, that Elastic, it's a great, I use it all the time. I'm not dogging on Z-Man, but this is a little bit different. When, with their salt that they have in there or whatever it is that's inside of it, it's like kind of porous. Water gets in there and they do get waterlogged. So they don't last forever, but they last a long time. This will last longer. It's incredibly durable, incredibly durable. Once you get one of these on a mule jig, because mule does make jigs, this is what that's gonna look like. Now, I will say that is a limited edition purple um, that was released last year. And I immediately bought every size that they had because I was like, I knew I was gonna want that later. And this is exactly why. It just matches up with that Dakota Sunrise so well. The purple pink combo, you just can't go wrong. And now that I'm mentioning jigs, they do make jig heads that match those plastics as well. So I'll show you a couple of these. I'll show you one up close. There is the white, and they do have that little hook keeper right there. And that is what really holds the plastic right up on the hook shank. And that's all it really takes. You just pull, you pull your bait right over that, and, uh, and, and honestly, it's gonna stay on forever. Now they do a white, they do, whoa, that one's gone forever. They do have black. Again, there's that purple. That was a limited edition. I do not think that you can get that one. I don't think you can get that one anymore. But they also have chartreuse. They got a couple different ones. I know there's a bubblegum pink one, which I've got. Now, the crazy thing is, is I've kind of mentioned these are ultralight baits. You're not going to see a lot of big stuff, a lot of big profile stuff. That jig, for reference, that jig is 3 30 seconds of an ounce. That's the biggest one they make. And they go all the way down to 180. Now let me show you, this is a 164. But it's just that little guy right there that's not even the tiniest one that they make. So there's a 164. So when I mean ultra light, I mean ultra light. And the crazy thing is they make plastics to match. So here's that Donkey Tail Junior. This is a 1.6 or 1.8, I can't remember which one it is. This thing is absolutely deadly for trout, for bluegill, for crappie, um, suckers, like you name it. If there's a if there's a smaller size fish out there, if there's a pan fish to be had, perch, these will absolutely light them up. So we talked about the donkey tail. We talked about the donkey tail junior. What else do they have in the lineup? Well, last year they came out with this bad boy. This is the horsefly. Um, it's a really cool plastic. It has the same properties as the, let me see if I can get one out here for you. Oh, I actually have one rigged right here. It has the same properties as uh, the stretch properties, right? As that Donkey Tail and Donkey Tail Junior, but in a really, really cool profile. Check that thing out. Um, the, the First of all, great ice fishing plastic, but this thing is absolutely murderous for panfish and it will definitely crush trout. And this is on the, I believe this is the 330 or the 132 ounce jig. So my favorite jig sizes, the ones that I use the most, the 332, which is this largest size, this matches perfectly with the donkey tail. The 1 16th for the donkey tail junior, that's a great combo. And then for anything like the horsefly, 332 or the 164. I think if you've got, that's a nice smattering. You know, if you're only gonna get a couple, if you're a bass fisherman, you absolutely have to have the 332. Like, it, you just have to have it. That's gonna be the one you're gonna want. You're gonna wanna go donkey tail. If you wanna catch everything, um, I would say either 332 or 1 16th, probably 1 16th, go a little bit heavier just to stay safe, 1 16th, and then that is gonna pair awesome with the Donkey Tail Junior. You are going to catch everything. If it swims, you can catch it. When it comes to tips and tricks, when you're dealing with the Donkey Tail, right, the larger size or the Donkey Tail Junior, what I like to do, you can Ned rig it for sure. I mean, that's a great method. Now, when you're in a place where like Jeff and I were, um, What's great about having a little bit heavier size, so that like, you know, uh, 332, what you can really do is um, you just run it like a paddle tail, right? You're gonna swim it through cover, but when it's a little heavier and using lighter line, I usually use like an eight pound braid, like a six pound leader, and I always use that high vis yellow. Or, or white, but I, high vis yellow is the one that you can always get and it works really well for me because what's gonna happen with these lighter, you know, lighter jigs, um, you're gonna almost watch the line get pulled off before you are gonna 
feel uh, anything, even in a stiff rod. Um, that is, that's one of my biggest tips is make sure you're using that high vis line if you're using a braid to say a fluoro or a mono leader. I, I can't recommend that enough. And then watch your line. You're going to see that happen. And that, and that becomes even more so uh, true as you downsize in weight, right? So let's say you're getting to a point where you're hitting that like 164th size or that 180th. You're going to want to downsize your line all the way to the like two, maybe four pound test. And you're going to, I like to use fluoro. That's just me. But you know, you just want to make sure that you're, you're downsizing the line appropriately. Now you can do that with a leader, but I would also recommend a little bit longer leader, the lighter that you go, right? I want to rely on that braid the, the smallest amount as possible and let that jig, I want contact with it as much as I can so that I can sense any kind of bite or I can even just watch the rod tip. But again, you're probably going to see the line take off a hair before you actually feel the fish bite and that's when you're going to want to set that hook. Now another cheat code, another way around this would be to use a bobber. Um, Mule fishing does have uh, floats, they work fantastic. And it's just a great way to fish that light line uh, fishing. You can drift that in the river, that is absolutely deadly. But if you know the depth where you're seeing some panfish, it can also be a killer in the, in the lake as well. So that's how Jeff and I started fishing. And again, we started just kind of trying everything out. We're, we're knocking the rust off for sure. This is maybe the second or third open water trip we've had all year. So it's a little bit of knock the rust off. But once we started finding them, um, it turned into let's find the right color. And the, the nice thing about having this assortment of colors, you have everything from white and chartreuse all the way down to like a black and a purple with some green pumpkin and even like that fire engine red in between so you get it like within the same you know exact bait you basically are co covering all of the the options that you you're really going to need to see in a day i just happened to start with purple and that's the one that started working so when we were in like the shadow shadowier areas where we were working around cover purple was the ticket then we wanted we had to move on we kind of fished out that open section and we started heading up a canal the second we got into the canal kind of rounded the corner we still had that deep water where they had a quick escape and then there was still some structure uh, along the bank and we kept catching fish however it definitely turned into like we needed different colors like moving away from purple all of a sudden was great i think we lost some of that cloud cover the water started warming up a little and as we transitioned areas and moved away from like the heavy cover to like more sparse cover it was chartreuse like you had to have either the chartreuse jig or the chartreuse minnow now that's the one we haven't covered yet because that is the new bait so this is the mule minnow this was just released this week well technically i guess last week super cool bait comes in the same colors that you know and love from mule fishing and if you don't know and love them you're going to i can promise you this is just a really heckin cool profile so almost like a leech profile so you can see how thin it is but then if you turn it sideways here you can see it gets a little bit fatter so it's like a squished donkey tail with instead of the little uh, the little paddle tail you're actually getting a little forked you're getting a little fork tail here at the back um, it does have a rib section here just like the donkey tail does which is really maintaining a ton of that action and then again it does pair well with all of these different jigs i will say these i would downsize all of your jigs one size now these come in three different sizes a 3.2 a 2.2 and a 1.2. The 1.2 is one that I'm like super excited about. But honestly, when we started fishing these, you know, I wanted to learn about them. I wanted to understand how they work, what jigs they work with. And I do recommend if you're using a 332 for the donkey tail, if you're gonna get like the 3.2 um, minnow, I do think that you can downsize one. It's the head is gonna fit a little bit better. Um, and, and I just, that, that felt right to me. That's, that's what I really kind of took away. Here's the exact jig that I used yesterday to catch all the fish that you're seeing in this video. Well, not all, but like the majority of the fish that you saw caught in this video. This is like the Batman combo. Um, if I go the chartreuse uh, plastic with the black head, I call that like the, you know, the old school Batman. <laughs> I call this the Batman combo. This is one of my favorites. It always does really well. But you can see right here, you, you can just tell like the amount of action you're getting out of this tail, like by the, the tiniest little twitch it's a little bit crazy. And that is really what is sealing the deal here. Here is the 3.2. And if you're a bass fisherman, this is an incredible drop shot bait. Like you cannot go wrong. You do need to get a pretty small hook, but I mean, I used a size one, which felt oversized. I had no problems catching fish whatsoever. This thing was deadly on a drop shot. And honestly, like the more that I fished it, 
Um, when I first started, I was like, well, the drop shot's the only thing that's gonna work. But then once I saw it on that jig, I am pretty convinced that it doesn't really matter. It's the action of this tail and the durability that is gonna mean that you're gonna be able to tie one of these on in like each color, leave it in the bag. It's gonna last forever. It's still gonna catch fish at any point. Like it's just, it, it was pretty unbelievable. And then I'm gonna just go ahead, I'm gonna throw in a montage of catches right now. Got him. Nice. Crappy. There you go. DT Junior. There you go, man. Thanks for releasing yourself. Have a nice day. <laughs> oh. Barely got him. <laughs> got him. They've been super shallow. Got another one. For uh, bottom lip, this one. Oh, side lip, side lip, side lip, side lip. Oh, get in here, guy. There you go. Got him. Oh, good fish. Good fish. Keep Good fish. Good fish. Oh yeah, chunky. He's, dude, he is thick. He is thick. He is T-H-I-C-C -C thick. Got him. <laughs> Got one. Oh, decent. No, I said I haven't marked one. Oh, fatty, dude. Fatty. Oh, oh, we got to get the double pick. <laughs> Cheers, Bob. Too bad there's no fish over here. <laughs> no, I told you. No, I told you. I said, this is the place. You said. You said. <laughs> You're going to tell me that I'm wrong. Tell me that I'm wrong. Got him. Oh. Good one. Better one. Oh, good fish. Yo, 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 yo. It's a netter. A netter. No. Whoa. Are you seeing that? Oh my God. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, ultra light biggin. Throws the net in the water at it. Darn right I did. Oh, you gosh darn right. <laughs> and I do it again. <laughs> I hope so. Oh my god, is that a six? <laughs> no, but that's a freaking awesome that's fish. <laughs> Probably a three. Dude, that's a decent fish. Hey, let me get it really far away so it's <laughs> a nice six inch fish, you dork. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there was one fish over here. <laughs> now he admits it. See you, dude. Look at him. Ah, oh, yeah. The slow roll. The slow roll. Bet you regret taking me here now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Got one. Oh, God. oh, crappie. Oh, a nice one. Yo, look at the crappie. I just, I just got hit by a crappie. Look at the size of this thing. Nice. That is a slab, dude. You're gonna tell me that I'm wrong? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Crabby double up. This is this is also a slab. There you go. The dual release. All right. <laughs> I know how to do those too. Feel myself grinning. Her sister was a, was witch. a witch. And who is her sister? The wicked, wicked east, witch of the east, bro. Let's go get another one. Got one. I call oh, the crappie a giant. On the last. A giant on the last cast. Oh, it's a big one. Nice. Oh, it's a big one. Get over here. Like Dude, what? Oh, it's even bigger than what? That. Are you out of your mind? You must be out of your freaking mind. Dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and who was her sister? And who was her sister? <laughs> I'm coming. Oh my gosh. See you, dude. 
<laughs> All right, I am done. I am officially done. And that's what it's like to have a whole bunch of fun on the lake with like, seriously, like two baits. Like that was it. We used like two or three configurations. Maybe four, I guess, technically between us, and caught a heck ton of fish. This video, I hope, was really fun for you. You got to see some big fish. You got to learn a little bit about mule fishing. You got to see the new mule minnow, all three different sizes, some of the cool colors, learn a bit, a bit about the jigs, and then see some heckin' big fish getting caught on a really tiny, tiny tackle. I'm here to tell you, it's a ton of fun. If you haven't tried it, this is a phenomenal place. Mule fishing is a great place to learn because they are just the fish catchingest baits that I have ever used, and I stand by that every single time. So please go check them out. Um, I'm not saying you have to buy anything, but just go check them out. Uh, get their website at Peru's, and then if you have already tried them, dude, shout us out. Let them let us know down here what kinds of fish you've caught, and then let us know what the biggest fish you caught on your mule mule fishing plastic was. Want us, love to see that. I get, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Thank you for hearing me out, watching us have a little fun on the water. And as always, please uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, like, thumbs up, thingy deal, and then come please check us out Thursdays 8 p.m. Eastern for the Burley Fishing Podcast live stream. It is a ton of fun. We'd love to see you in chat and we'll catch you hopefully out on the water doing the same thing we did last week.